guessed. So what does this mean looking forward? Here are some, these are now projections of <coughs> how things would change if the concentration of CO2 were, uh, were to double over its, over its current level. And you see the implication is <coughs> a lot of warming in the northern latitudes, uh, in particular relative to averages, <coughs> and uh, in terms of overall averages by the end of the century, we're <coughs> We're talking about ranges of potentially three to four to five degrees Celsius average, <clears throat> roughly twice that Fahrenheit. Uh, and so again, so what? <laughs> um, when you look at the impacts, the question is, is there anything here to worry about? Uh, and the answer is yes. This is uh, an eye chart, you, know, you can get a copy of the slides later. This is a summary that was put together by, have you heard of the IPCC? IPCC is the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Uh, it's basically a group of uh, hundreds of scientists and government folks who come together uh, typically every, it's been a rough cycle of every four years to study the kind of state of the art of climate science and uh, uh, and technology and impacts. Uh, and they put this information together in one of the recent assessments. Uh, on the x-axis is the average global temperature <coughs> uh, from zero to five degrees Celsius. And these are the different kinds of impacts that uh, have been studied and are known to happen. <coughs> uh, water availability effects on ecosystems, uh, <coughs> the ability to grow food and crops, uh, effects on coasts, particularly sea level rise <coughs> as oceans rise in response to both warming and the melting of uh, polar ice, and effects on human health. And you can't see it, but there's a gradation in the colors that <coughs> get darker toward uh, the right side of this picture. Uh, <coughs> uh, and a lot of the details talk about what some of those impacts are. We'll look at a couple in the, in the middle. Uh, <coughs> The consensus uh, today, and it's been this way for a while, is that <coughs> if the global average temperature rises more than roughly two degrees Celsius over pre-industrial levels, over the levels of about 150 years ago, uh, we're in a region that is generally would, would generally be considered dangerous. There are poten <coughs> both potential impacts and potential irreversibilities, things that you just can't go back once you've crossed what's called a tipping point. So we'll keep in mind this two degrees Celsius. That, that, that's now become kind of the international goal in climate uh, <coughs> mitigation, trying not to exceed a two degrees Celsius rise in temperature. Recognize that we're already at about one degree. <coughs> um, the other thing um, I wanted to kind of uh, impress on you, again, this is one of the things that uh, doesn't come through easily when you look just at averages. <coughs> uh, an average uh, <coughs> is always a number that is part of a distribution. <coughs> uh, so if this is temperature, for example, <coughs> uh, and this is the average temperature, these are cold temperatures and these are warmer temperatures. And we know that we always have some cold days and some <coughs> uh, particularly warm days. Uh, <coughs> and uh, because this distribution squeezes, <coughs> there are relatively few what we would call extremely cold days <coughs> and typically relatively fewer extremely hot days. So what happens when the average temperature increases by not too much, <coughs> one or two degrees? <coughs> That's going to just take this whole distribution and just shift it a little bit to the right. When you do that, though, the tails of the distribution get affected much more dramatically than the mean. So <coughs> when you start it over here, if you can see that outline, and you move it over a couple of degrees, at this end of the spectrum, what used to be extreme cold days you don't see as many of those anymore. No? You're just born here. 
at this end of the spectrum, what used to be just a few extremely hot days now occupies a much larger region. Hot days become more frequent. Colder days become, extreme cold days become less frequent. <coughs> uh, so this notion of extreme events and the frequency of extreme events is really the purpose of this picture. And one of the things when you ask, so what, those are some of the things that we care a lot about. Uh, we've seen some evidence of that just recently. Um, so what is climate? I sh should have saved this for a question. What, what's the difference between climate and weather, for example? Do you know? <coughs> so technically, climate is defined as average weather, average actually over a 30-year period. And what are some of the measures, <coughs> measures of weather? Temperature is clearly one of them. And there are others, <coughs> uh, precipitation. <coughs> That has to be Vodafone. They're my favorite uh, <laughs> customer out there. Um, I put together some uh, data for, uh, since we're in Valencia, <clears throat> let's talk about the climate of Valencia. I don't know if you've, you've studied it. <clears throat> uh, I hadn't either until I dug up some of this information. So here's some data <clears throat> for um, <clears throat> the most recent 30-year period in, in Valencia. The average temperature, 18 and a half degrees Celsius, is around... 65 Fahrenheit, very comfortable average temperature. <coughs> uh, <coughs> like uh, many other places, it's colder in winter, hotter in summer. So we're right now in July, where peak temperatures <coughs> typically are a little shy of 30 degrees. Typically in the 80s would be the high, average temperatures <coughs> in, the mid, in the mid 70s. Uh, <coughs> uh, here's another measure of climate. Uh, the annual average rainfall, uh, <coughs> which determines water supply, the ability to grow crops. This, we're in a very intense agricultural region, as you, as you may know. Um, July is typically the driest month of the year in this region. <coughs> Most of the rainfall occurs uh, in the fall, and this is the average trend. So when these measures start changing and the extreme events start changing, <coughs> uh, it has impacts of the sort we'll talk about in, in a second. Another measure of climate, these are average numbers, um, <coughs> are the extremes that we talked about uh, earlier. Uh, I dug up some data on extremes for Valencia. Uh, <coughs> uh, they measure temperature out at the airport and also down uh, at the uh, city city center. Uh, the coldest day on record in Valencia, the coldest day, <coughs> minus 7 degrees Celsius. That's about minus 2 degrees Fahrenheit <coughs> for the rest of us. We would love that to be the... Uh, uh, I'm, <coughs> I'm sorry, that's about minus... Uh, no, it's about 19 degrees uh, <coughs> Fahrenheit. We would love that to be the coldest temperature in Pittsburgh, right? <clears throat> that occurred in 1956, 60 or 70 years ago. Yeah. Say again. The red line on the rainfall goes opposite the, the pattern of the blue. Um, let's see. If you, uh, this might be cumulative. Yeah, the question, what's this red line? Uh, I, I, I'm not sure, Stephanie. Uh, it's a good question. I didn't notice that. I, uh, mm. All together. Oh, oh, that's right. Of course, of course. Yeah, it's this, it's this same. Thank you. It's this same line. Because here's the temperature scale, and here's the rainfall scale. Thank you. Yeah, I, I knew I had looked at this before. I haven't woken up yet. Yeah, this is the same as that line. They're both on here. Um, <coughs> So the, the lowest temperatures on record um, are really quite old. What do you suspect the highest temperature around this part of the world has been? 40-something. 40 yeah. 43, <coughs> uh, <coughs> which is about 113 degrees Fahrenheit. 
What was the highest temperature in Paris last week? Paris, you know that? Paris had a record high last week, 114 F, about half a degree more than that, <coughs> 45 and a half degrees Celsius. Paris is substantially north of us, <coughs> uh, and it has just had extreme temperature higher than the highest temperature on record here in southern Europe. Okay? And look when this happened, just a few years ago, <coughs> and a few years before that. So what are we seeing here? We're seeing something that is consistent with the story I just showed you in that distribution. Right? <coughs> We're seeing fewer extreme cold days. These are 60, 70 years old. And we're seeing, <coughs> more recently, more extreme warm days. It's consistent with that shift. We shifted the average temperature even one or two degrees. And we're starting to see this in the record. And so again, so what? Uh, the so what is that uh, these extreme events are happening more often. And they're associated not just with high temperatures, where people often get ill and uh, frail people uh, often don't survive. <coughs> but uh, other types of events of the sort that we see here, ranging from droughts to floods to fires, and we've seen in the last number of years, which certainly within the last decade, uh, more and more of these extreme events around the world. So can we say climate change is causing this? We can't say that as a causality. What we can say is that what we're seeing now on the ground today is consistent consistent with what we would expect to happen <coughs> uh, in a world with climate change. And some of these impacts have already been documented. The IPCC has been working on trying to document actual impacts today around the world. Uh, <coughs> again, I can give you the details of this. But these are impacts. The blue is on physical systems <coughs> uh, like snow and ice uh, <coughs> and river systems. The green is biological systems. The red are human and managed systems. <coughs> the point simply is you can look at a global map and see documentation of changes that are already, uh, already happening. So the message here is that climate change is not one of these things that <coughs> at some time in the future, we don't have to worry about it today. It's, <coughs> uh, it's increasingly documented uh, as happening now. Uh, here are some projected changes in Europe, uh, in uh, specifically with uh, the effects of water limitations on crops. It's basically southern Europe and Spain, in particular, that would be hardest hit by these kinds of uh, these kinds of impacts. 